So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, good morning, and good evening to all of you who come from different parts of the world. And it's always a delight to have you, especially those who are making the sacrifice to stay up so late in the night or even to wake up this early in the morning. Uh, unfortunately, the COVID pandemic is still raging. It's still with us. It doesn't want to go, it seems. But the safest place to be is at home. And where, wherever you are, wash your hands regularly and sanitize your environment. In public places, please keep your social distance and wear your face mask. The new government in Guyana has taken a decision to reopen its two international airports for scheduled commercial flights from October 12th this year. And this is good news for so many people who want to go to Guyana to seek their fortunes in this land uh, of oil now. Previously, it was a land of gold and diamonds. And many people want to go to explore business and employment opportunities. So a lot of people would be going, I am sure, but there is still this fear of robberies and crime and violence. Guyana is set to receive the highest estimated total income from its multi-billion dollar barrel um, oil and gas resources. This when compared to Suriname and Trinidad, even when you look at the different oil price scenarios. Sonia Budu, <clears throat> Vice President of Upstream Research, has said that three major offshore discoveries have been made in Suriname. Budu said Rystad Energy sees Suriname receiving much less income due to its it being very immature in terms of exploration and production in its upstream sector. But of course, that will eventually improve. This, ladies and gentlemen, Company Limited, a, a legally registered research and publishing company operating since 2010. We are dedicated to highlighting and discussing issues and events that impact mainly Indo-Caribbean people in the region. We believe that they and their views are often marginal or marginalized in the mainstream media and in formal discourses and in public groups, organizations, and institutions. The topics of these meetings are mainly on Indo-Caribbean people, but these meetings are not for Indians only. It is open to all regardless of ethnicity. This forum follows the same objectives of the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, seeking equality and social justice. Ladies and gentlemen, this public meeting will take the form of a panel discussion interspersed with screenings of the film. This is a new genre that we are going to introduce. We have had a lot of talk, 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 and only talk in the past. We are going to see uh, um, excerpts of a, of a film for the first time. First, the, uh, the trailer then an extract and then um, some background video. This meeting would end at 9 p.m. That's Trinidad time. So it's going to take about an hour and a half. Please make sure you mute your microphone unless you have to speak. The microphone icon is at the bottom left corner of your screen. For legal purposes and to avoid lawsuits of slander and defamation, we hereby state that the views expressed by presenters and participants are their own and do not necessarily represent those of Indo-Caribbean Cultural Center. Our moderator tonight is Sadhana Mohan, someone new. She's from Suriname. She will rotate as a moderator with Charlene Maharaj, who has been with us for the last three meetings. Mohan is a legal advisor specialized in inheritance and estate matters. Mohan is also a trained Bharatanatyam dance teacher with her own institute called Satrangi, where she conducts classes in Bharatanatyam, Indian folk and film songs, Bollywood and fusion. Sadhana Mohan is also a certified yoga teacher. 
She is the co-host of a singer's contest in Suriname called Sare Gamapa. Mrs. Mohan, welcome and please take over from here. Unmute. Good night. Good evening. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Mahabir. I'm Sadhana Mohan. Namaste. My first time, so wish me all luck. Our topic tonight is the screening of and discussion with the director and cast on the local film Mightier Than the Sun. The new future film is about an Indo Trinidadian couple played by Arnold Govindhan and Kala Nihali, who has to deal with dark secrets and supernatural forces on troubling nights. As Dr. Mahabir mentioned last week, not many Indian parents in India and the Indian diaspora are inclined to encourage their children to study the arts, the humanities, and social sciences. They prefer instead to influence their children to study medicine, law, and engineer as a career. The result is that there are proportionally few visual arts, stage performance, comedians, spoken words poets, filmmakers, directors, and actors. This is why tonight we are delighted to highlight film director Shravan Jagmohan and actors Arnold Penny, Govindhan, hope I speak the name uh, well, and Kala Nihal. This film, Mightier Than the Sun, was 10 years in the making, from story to final cut. It deals with mental illness, supernatural forces, and alcoholism. The story was written by Anthony Blackburn, an English national who fell in love with Trinidad and who was inspired by the poetry of how Trinidadians speak. Can I please ask everyone if you want to participate, you can participate by writing in the chat box at the bottom of the screen, which will be seen by everyone. Please identify yourself by name and your country. We would like to identify everyone by name for the recording due and for a demographic survey. If your name does not appear on your profile on your screen, please click the three dots on the box on the top right of your picture and type your name. And please mute your microphones unless you have the speech. So we we'll see the um, trailer of the film now. We will now see the trailer of the film yeah. now. And because it's short, we're going to show it twice, back to back. Trevon. You have to unmute your mic, Trevon, and, and share screen. Right. Drink. Cigarette. Cigarette. They can find my body, you know. They can find my body. You know. Maybe not today or tomorrow. Oh but the couple I know. Cigarette. 
They can find my body, I know. Find my body. Maybe not today or tomorrow. But the Kobo and the wings can show that. They could never find you. And if they ask me for you, I just tell them that you leave my ass. <laughs> they ain't got no trouble believing that. Thank you so much. I hope for sharing the trailer. Not a problem. The producer and director of the short film. He has 13 he years of experience working and studying with Raymond Shukong and his apprentice in theater. He is talented in production, development, writing, editing, costume design, set design, lighting design, theater management, marketing, acting, producing, and directing. So the whole film in one person. His production company is named First Instinct. Trevin was honored with an award achievement in musical theater from the National Academy for Performing Arts, Napa in Trinidad. Trevin Jagmohan, the microphone is yours now for 10 minutes. Please welcome Trevin. Well, thank you very much. Hi, Trevin. I am um, very um, happy. I'm very happy you're hearing me. I'm very happy you're hearing me. Yes. But we're in an echo, eh? A yeah, echo so I'm very happy to... I'm very happy to... You're in an echo. Oof. Yeah. You're okay. Echo. Because you have two devices on, I think, so... Uh, I'm not maybe... sure. But go ahead, go ahead. One Please. is mute. All right, go ahead. Um... No, thank you very much for having me here. Oh, that's a continuous echo in truth. Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Yes. Oh, thank God. Yes, hi. So yes, thanks. Thank you again for having me. I, um, I really do appreciate the opportunity to share um, this work, which is not just my work, um, but share it with the diaspora in a very, in a way that, you know, we didn't get a chance to really have the opportunity to, um, to show this, you know, like as a premiere, you know, we, COVID made us, COVID took away you know, the, the glitz and the glamour of a movie premiere for this. So I, uh, any opportunity I get to have a discussion with an audience, I am extremely happy to have it. And um, I hope, um, I hope Carla and Pini feel the same way. And um, I, I hope the other members of the team uh, get a chance to, to, to view as well. Um, I am... Um, I started this journey from producing this film in 2018, when I came back to Trinidad. I spent six months abroad by my family, my parents in Florida. And I called Pini and I told Pini, when I come back to Trinidad, we're doing this. And we, um, it took 2018, all of 20, the rest of August 2018 into November, 2019 when we shot and then it took about two months two three months after that and then we edited and finished editing on March the 22nd of this year and then um and then I I, I kind of hit we kind of hit the wall because on top of the production money for um producing the film the amount of money it will take to get this film 
to the relevant film festivals around the globe, it's it it could easily run us anywhere between ten to twenty thousand TT dollars. And you know, a different um, venues in the world, different ve venues in the world have um different fees. You know, so it goes from you could go to Sundance in America for 68 US and you could go to India at um, the Goa Film Festival and that might be about $8 US. You know, so there, there are many um, pros and cons we still fighting up against to get this movie around. The Trinidad Film Festival just happened and um, so we got to share that at least locally. So it's now how we are gonna take this abroad. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Is there any specific questions that the, um, uh, the moderator would like to ask? Ask. Um, for now, it's okay. good. Thank you so much. There are, um, I think, a question about um, how will we be able to see the movie, but I think questions and asked answers will be um, later. Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So thank you very much, Trevin. No problem. I think um, again, we will see a short speed again or, um, or yes, later. We can. Came in just now, so you can see the trailer again. So if you can watch the trailer again for okay. now. I will play the trailer one more time. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. Technology. I apologize. <laughs> You seeing? Drink? I think in a bit. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Cigarette? They can find my body, you know. Maybe not today or tomorrow. But the couple and the room is gonna show that. They could never find you. And if they ask me for you, I just tell them that you leave my ass. <laughs> you ain't got no trouble believing that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so I uh, hope everyone I, has seen uh, the trailer I, again. Uh, may, may I add something as I play the trailer? Yes. Um, I, a lot of people asked why, why the particular drums that you hear throughout the movie. And it's not simply Tassa. The drums are the rhythms that are played for Husi. And the drums symbolize mourning. And I myself play with a, a Husi group in St. James here. And I, um, when I was thinking about the right soundtrack to go along with the film, the, even though the drums may be very rhythmic, and some people might think of it as celebratory, because of the connotation that it has with the commemoration of Husi, that's where the mourning comes in. 
in, in this film as well. So when you see the film, everything ties up into a nice little package. Why the song was chosen, why the set was chosen, why the why this story, it, everything is linked. And when you see the, a little later on, when you see another part of the movie, you will see another piece of symbolism inside of there. And, um, and I just hope everybody enjoys because the amount of little Easter eggs that are inside of there, I, you know, I take pride in that. So it's not just the script, it was what we added what is the actor's interpretation of the writer's words or my interpretation as the director pulling the entire project together? It, it's, it's not just a simple matter of rehearsal, shoot, and then edit. It's always, there's, there's finessing inside of this. So I just wanted to add that about the drums as we heard the drums in the trailer again. Thank you very much, Trevin. So we will go on to our second speaker. Our second speaker tonight is Arnold Penny Govindhan. Hope I have pronounced the name also good. A stage and film actor, a multiple Cassidy Award winner. He's a lead actor in The Cutlass, which was screened at the Keynes Film Festival in France. Penny is a stage actor with over 20 years experience in acting. Arnold Govindhan has acted in other films including Moving Part and Hit for Six. Arnold, the floor is yours now. Speak for 10 minutes approx and uh, please everyone else, please uh, mute your uh, microphones. <coughs> Thank you. Arnold Spenny Govindhan. Uh, good night. Good night everybody. Um, hope you all are well. Staying safe. You hear me? Yeah. Yes, you're very clear. Okay, well, um, do you know how you're going, partner? <laughs> yeah, man. Do you know Maraj now? I've known him for a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How long yeah, I want to say right, hello, right. but you know what I mean now, right? Um, man, I good, good? Yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 All right, um, I didn't really prepare anything to, to speak about, but um, I can tell you about myself a little bit. Uh, I started off in theater probably in 1996. Um, before that, it was involved with a, a rapso group, a local rapso group, which is a kind of rhythm of the word, storytelling kind of style singing. And um, from there, just gradually ended up on stage eventually. Right? Um, as Sadana spoke about um, uh, the, and I think it's a, it's a good topic sometimes where the Indian culture do actually promote their children more into arts. You know, um, if I was were not in the arts, I might have been a businessman or something like that along the lines. But um, pure grit and gut, yeah, it just go straight through and follow your dreams. You know, in, in that kind of way. And in doing that, as I have, as a person, I've grown a lot. You know, because. Yeah, it, in acting, you tend to be a lot of the times playing other people. And while it's doing that, you tend to learn a lot about yourself in retrospect. You know, um, and for me, like when I try to encourage younger actors or, or performers or, or even anybody who, who wants to do uh, like um, probably public speaking and stuff like that, because you have a lot of bright people, they can't, they can't express themselves on stage or they can't. They can't um, find the words to to come across as genuine as they would like it to be. I, I always encourage them to to do a basic acting course. Anybody, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun in the first place, and secondly, you, you tend to get to know yourself a lot better. And where I'm in Entac now, which is the National Theatre Company, and we tend to put on a lot of Caribbean work and sometimes international um, productions. But as everybody know, with the COVID um, thing, the theatre is uh, kind of on lockdown because people can't come on um, sometimes. And from a business perspective, it doesn't make much sense to have, to have four seats empty between the customers. So today we are trying to find new and genuine ways to, um, to actually reach an audience where 
we try, try to do a lot of monologues uh, about um, the topical things that that's happening in the country and and uh, like for example crime and and relationships and and a lot of that. Um, and over the COVID period, we we hear news about people who are uh, um, having domestic problems, you know. In, in particular, basically, the, the film is basically kind of about that in some manner, right? And we, we try to use theater to get to them, okay? Um, in essence, the film kind of reminded me of uh, a period in Trinidad where a lot of men were, were um, husbands were uh, murdering their wives. You know, and um, it 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 wrong on me with that because and, and it mostly used to happen basically. I don't know, if, but every culture in in the country, every race, right? But particularly Indian race in Trinidad, the where the alcohol and 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 the over drinking and whatever the cases, and in poor communities, the and probably possibly a lack of education in some aspects would take their spouse's life and then kill themselves. And um, the film touches on that in some aspects. Uh, and it also touches on um, the woman's role and what the woman's role is supposed to be in, a, in, a, in an Indian relationship. Um, and for me, if we all watch it, even though there is a, a bit of fantasy about it um, in the film, it, it, it touched mainly on in trying to deliver the performance. Um, I hope you all get to see it, and I hope you all enjoy it when you get to see it. Uh, and um, uh, uh, Mr. Mahabe, um, have my number. That, uh, my email is koindana gmail.com. It's pretty easy. My, my last my last name there, and uh, you could probably send any feedback that you need to, um, if you, if you have any. So that is it. Uh, thank you all. Um, suppose we'll have a Q and A later, so I'll be willing to answer any questions. Thank there. you so much, Arnold. Thank you very much. Yep. Can I please ask Trevor to send an extract of the film now? Trevin? Yes? Yes. 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 Yes.
You're still drinking? I've been getting vexed, no woman. You've been drinking since the sun rise. And I'm still up, and the sun going down. What are I telling you? That is ass. I might you than the sun. You spend all your good money on liquor. I might you than the sun. You just neglect your job. I might you than the sun. And you did neglect me. I might you than the sun. You is an ass. And I's an ass for marrying you. You was next to useless when I first met you. And you ain't proof. Not a chat. I might you than the sun. I'm a Rashid. I should have. I wanted to. I would have been happy with Rashid. I would have respected him. <laughs> Never respect me. I did. For one or two months. And then I pretended to respect you. And then. Bring me some food! I can only bring you pain from now on. No, you didn't. Not us. I loved you. Whatever that was, it wasn't love. I was love. Just didn't want it. What I didn't want was your drunken hands ripping at me. A married man does have a right. A drunken! It has some rum in that glass. You sure you don't want to drink it before you pelt, no? You sure you don't want to drink it before you pelt, no? I hope that was a, a, a nice, um, you know, wetting of the appetite kind of so clip. So much traveling. Nobody can go to the theaters to watch it, but... Uh, it was very touching to see him. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Not a problem. Yes, it's a very nice shot. Um, our last speaker tonight is uh, Kala Nihal. Kala, can you please invite you to uh, come and uh, speak to us for approximately 10 minutes, please? Good night, everyone. Um, first, I want to, first, I want to introduce Kala myself. Kala, a university psychology graduate who began acting in 2015. Five years later, she shakes things up. In this, her first film appearance, Kala had no real intentions of being an actress, but wonderful performance. We just saw a small piece, but it was very nice. She wanted to try something new that would take her out of her comfort zone. And she found a home in theater. Very nice of you, Carla. Thank you. It's welcome. Thank you so much. Um, much like Pini, I did not prepare 10 minutes worth of a discourse, but um, I will- No problem, no I problem. Could, <laughs> I could make it through. Um, all right, so I just want to talk a little bit about the film. And um, to be honest, I still feel like I am still figuring out the film because it's so layered. You know, um, while, while that clip was playing, I actually jotted down a couple of things. And it was, I mean, I'm still finding things as I watch as I watch and rewatch the film, you know, from, um, from that clip that you saw, it might seem as though the film is about a couple in a tumultuous relationship. Um, it's clear that they are aggressive and potentially violent. And as the film progresses, you see that, yeah, there definitely is a heavy, um, overtone of domestic violence. Um, no violence is actually shown in the film, but so much is alluded to. Um, you see from the start already that we touch on alcoholism as well. 
Uh, you'll see that a lot throughout the film. Um, I think you could already tell as well that we 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 veering into the gender roles in relationships, and I guess in specifically and and Indo Trinidadian relationship. But to be honest, I mean these all of these issues. As Pini said earlier, at a point in time in Trinidad, or and maybe still, maybe still even today, um, they seem like the that that the violence, the drinking, um, the man being dominant, the woman being submissive, those seem like very Indo Indo Trinidadian or Indo Caribbean things. But the fact is, you know, they really they are just really just relationship things and things that I guess as time progresses, we are trying to correct. Um, and I, I don't think we intended to, intended the film to be a PSA, you know, for these issues. Um, I think we just had a good script in front of us and we just wanted to tell the story as honestly as possible. And um, I don't think Pini's character was just a villain. I don't think my character was just a victim. I also don't think that she was a hero either. You know, she, as I, I know, I, I'm speaking about the film and not many people would have seen the film, but, but um, hopefully eventually all of y'all do. <laughs> But um, yeah, when you do see the film, you'll see just how many things are worked into this 37 minutes, you know, and I think the story is quite universal, even though, even though it's, it's Indian actors and an Indian director, you know, telling us seemingly Indian story um, really is a story about I guess how how difficult relationships could be and unfortunately you know this this story shows you just how truly bad it can get you know this story takes you all the way to the worst end of the spectrum. And um, it really just shows you what, what jealousy and insecurity and the need to possess somebody in a relationship, just if that goes unchecked, you know, just how, how far it could reach. Um, uh, oh, and well, aside from all those issues that I just spoke about, it is, um, it has the, as Pini mentioned, and as Trafon mentioned, it has the, the supernatural element to it as well. And, um, well, when we first read the script, and we all read the script at different times, Pini would have read the script over 10 years ago, Trafon might have read it. Um, he could correct me when he speaks maybe five years ago and I read the script last year and um, we all had different takes on it. <laughs> um, Travon was leaning more towards a super like a, a kind of supernatural on the current. I thought it was more psychological. Um, to this day we have not answered the question. And I think that's why a lot of the movie is left open-ended. So the, it's really up to the viewer to make of the film what they will, you know? Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if I made it to 10 minutes. <laughs> you could tell me. No problem, it's good. All right. It's good. <laughs> Thank you so no much. Thank you so much, uh, Trevor and Frank. Thank you so much, Arnold. And thank you so much, uh, Carla. Welcome. I think uh, the trailer and the part we just saw was amazing.
Thank you for your explanation. So the floor is now open for questions and answers, questions and comments, and of course, answers and contributions. Please, they must be short, no more than two to three minutes. And um, to respond to your active participation, you can also participate by um, writing in the chat, chat box above. So um, please, the floor is open now. Anyone with a question? If, uh, if no one, um, can I come in? Um, I just uh, would like to know what's the motivation of the um, director and producer to produce this film, that is a reflection of social reality, whether some of the details are factual or some are just um, fictional, etc. Et so I would appreciate if you can um, just help walk us through that, the motivation for doing this film. Okay, so I'll take that question. Yeah, um, the Thank you, thank you for the, having No problem. The motivation for that, for the film, it, it's two pronged. It is, actually when Pini and I got together and we discussed this while we were looking for the right actress before our antenna went to Carla. It was, you know, we, we spoke about, you know, stuff that we've experienced in our own families that you, you have relatives who have been in this situation, unfortunately. And I, um, I think where, where most of us are lucky enough that, you know, do you have survivors of those situations? So yes, the issues were a plus, but for me, the artistic value, the poetry, the cinematography, the acting that is needed to pull off work like this, the craft is what pulled me into the, to the project. It is the possibility of doing a short film. This is a medium length short film of 37 minutes long with credits. And it may not fit into a lot of short categories in film festivals, but it was a, it was a, it was a worthwhile piece to attempt for my first attempt as a film director and producer. So artistically, I said, that is where I pick up the script. You know, I love the language. I love the characters that are in it. And I'm saying love. And you can understand on the, on the same side of the issues being dealt with that you have to talk more they love characters that are vile, like the Joker or, you know, characters that you want to know. How can an actor play somebody like that? Or how can they stage a story that, that is so dark and grimy? It is because the artistic value of the piece always inspires what you do with the work. It's not, it's art reflects life and it's not, it, it never, it, hopefully sometimes it goes the other way. But this is not us condoning. This is us taking a reflection of something and holding it up. And then saying, you know, as an audience member, what do you think of this? Because there are so many questions that come out of this that I can't even begin to, to come up with myself. So I hope that answers something. Yep. Can I throw in a piece? Um. Yeah. Round again, sir. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, uh, my group, the Hindu Sabers, uh, actually tried tackling the issue of alcoholism and suicide. And we come from a family where my father was an alcoholic for the last 10 years of his life. And the kind of stuff that went on there showed me at home and in the group that most of the Indians in Trinidad have a handle alcoholism, um, and ex especially extreme alcoholism, which has violence and all that kind of thing in it. 
Um, we don't have um, psychologists and counselors, you know, advising people, well, this is a better way to do it. You know, the Alcoholics Anonymous people will tell you, you know, don't do this and don't do that. Um, but all people have no idea and they usually aggravate the person. So like my mom, you know, she couldn't do anything about my father drinking. So she would wait uh, when he get up in, uh, in the morning sober, she would start hammering him, right? And he wrong, exactly the wrong thing to do. Why you do this? Why you do it? And um, he would run out of the house. Oh, <laughs> yellow car, you drive out sometime. And he would go and get drunk and come back violent, right? He would take the pot and throw it out the window. He would, he would hit her with the gun, bun, gun butt and everything. I, I had to stop him once and threaten to beat him up. And the next day, next morning, the same thing would happen. And she would do the same thing. Uh, as soon as he opened his eye, she would start to hammer him. And she never understood that that was the wrong thing to do. I know it is hard to take it, but what she was doing was aggravating the problem. Now, I, I myself at the time didn't know what is a better solution, but I can see that many of our people don't have any idea of solution. You know, like we see the, the actress there, you know, aggravating the guy and telling him you're an ass and so on. And hit me now if you want to hit me. I mean, that's begging for trouble. That's begging for trouble. And um, it goes to the inevitable. He would hit her, he'd break her jaw, you'd kill her and so on. And then he would be very apologetic and all that kind of thing. Um, so I think, you know, the film is given an, an opening that um, here we have an a, a insoluble or apparently insoluble problem. And I know it's not the job of the film, you know, to be a psychologist, but it can open up, you know, for the discussion of, look, what would be a better thing for the woman to do in that kind of situation than what she's doing, which is really leading up to him finishing off. And that's it for mine. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Can I please ask um, Ravi Dev to also comment, please? Is Ravidev there? He, he is there, but um, or he doesn't. Maybe he, maybe he stepped out. Maybe he stepped out. Yes. Or, yeah, so yeah. Dr. Betoram, um, he too. Also not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, but Salim is there, Salim is there, okay. and then Albert Williams, I see. Can we ask, and then Sylvia. Can we ask them for yeah. a small contribution, please? Okay. I, can I go? Yes, yes, Salim. yes please. You, you're talking to Albert, Albert can go? Yes. Albert can go, anybody. Yes. All right, I'll go, I'll go. Yes. Let me tell you, that film is very touching, and I really like how, what they, producer said it's very difficult for the actresses and the actor to play those roles. Those are not easy roles to, to, to project on a screen. And I'll tell you, my first exposure to this was one of my Trinidadian friends who played guitar with me in Canada. And he actually went to the extreme. He killed himself because he was in love with his sister-in-law and that could not have continued. This is some serious social issues. And so he had her on the phone and he said, look, if we can't be any more friends anymore, friends anymore, then I'll shoot myself. And he did. And that thing hit me. I was only 22 years old and he was like my, my, my mentor because he played guitar and I did. And then about two years ago, my nephew drew alcohol. He had the best job in Belize. He was an engineer and he was like the ultimate job you could ever get. He took care of all the airplanes. He stressed, 
his drinking and a, a wife that was an, was a little bit not for him, you know, she was a, a around. And those three things caused him to take his life. So the, a movie like this is deep for me because it is really getting to certain core of Indian people. These were Indian people. The guy from Trinidad was an Indian guy and the, the guy is my nephew. And the question I need to ask you is, is this, could this be for educational purposes or is it, what is it for? Because it is, there's a need that uh, Mr. Ram said perfectly right. We have no training, nothing in our DNA and our knowledge. I'm a PhD in economics. I have no knowledge of how to deal with this kind of relationship issues. The first thing they will say is go to a counselor. You know, that's, that's where we go. So I applaud you. I like what you had. You see me, I'm, very, I'm taking it deeply because this is some serious stuff that you guys are working with. And I, I hope you get this movie as, as far and as wide as you possibly can, okay? Thank you so much, um, Mr. Williams. Travon or um, Arnold, do you want to comment on this, please? Um, you want to go, Travon? Oh, we, we, could, we could both go. I mean, Carla, you could jump in too. If you, um... <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Yeah, um, the, it's, it's pretty difficult to play these characters. I, 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 <laughs> You know, when you're growing up, everybody wants to play the bad guy in the movie or something. Mm -hmm. like and and um, it's not my first time playing um, a deprived character, you know, and they, they're really not easy because <laughs> you, you have to kind of go beyond your, your morals and certain principles that you hold there as a person mm -hmm. to, 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 and, and surpass that and, and, have, and still have empathy for that character and it, it's really not it's not an easy place to, to be um the, uh, the thing is um uh, i got a script i read the script probably 10 years ago in a playwright's workshop and the strangest thing was uh um anthony blackburn who is white or english right and he he, he found a perspective into the this piece, which rarely you would see um, Trinidadians writing about the darker side. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that, that is what usually happens. We usually talk about uh, the sunshine and coconut trees and seas and whatever the case is. And rarely they ever delve into um, the dark parts of, of, of uh, the crevices that the monsters sleep. Um, and we got, we got to explore that in this film. When I did it initially, we did it as a, a theater production, right? Chawan, remember that's what Chawan saw it. And I saw, um, I think it was Charmaine Andrew said that it, it's domestic violence is all racist. And it was actually true because the original, one of the original actions was African when we did it originally, you know? And it, it struck a different chord in, in, in the audience at that, that point in time. So it is basically everybody but particularly in this piece, we focused heavily on the Indo Trinidadian um, people because I, I had experiences with, with alcoholism and people who, who drink alcohol and come home and be their wives and most of the cases and things like that. And um, it's not a pretty picture, it's not. And my basic hope is that this, one of the aspects of the film is the domestic violence and, and it could strike a chord in people where they, they could see themselves and reflect on maybe uh, maybe that is me on the screen there. That is what happens when I drink or that is what, how I behave with my husband when, when, I get to, when he comes home like that or vice versa. And um, and that's one of my sincere hopes that the, the film does. What? You know, um, what are you about, bro? Are you yeah, that's that thank it. you so much, Arnold. Yeah, um, can I please ask Salim now to comment, please? Hi, I good night, I... everyone. Yes, good night, good night, good night, and um, yes, thanks for um for asking me to say something, you know, um, and, you know, glad to be on 
on this webinar with uh, my Indian diaspora brothers and sisters across the globe. Um, well, for me personally, as a as a, and I might be, I might be rambling, so please excuse me. Um, you know, being in Guyana, working on the ground in, in the Indian community, especially or primarily, um, uh, I had at an early stage of my work recognized that rum or alcoholism uh, was was an issue, was a big issue. But I never thought it was an issue that we just adopted suddenly, you know, that because there was a distillery down the road, we decided to drink a lot of rum to support the company. I, I thought it was deeper than that, you know, and it, uh, to me, it has all, yeah. a lot to do with power. You know, Indians, um, uh, when they came to uh, Guyana and of course, Trinidad and other places, uh, they were powerless people. The men I'm talking about specifically, uh, because it's all men who are drinking rum and and you know, forms the basis of this movie. Um, and kudos to the guys who are, who are produced it and acted in it. You guys did a fantastic job and I'm hoping it will bring light to the fact that um, one way of um, expressing our power is not through rum, right? So, so I, think, I think power was an issue in the early days and Indians as a form of escape um, went to the bottle, you know, and that bottle um, um, had so much spirit in it it kind of inflamed our, um, the way we express ourselves. If you look at our music, if you look at our, our, the way we dance, the way we talk, the way, whatever we, how we treat women, everything, you know, um, it had a rum element in it, um, a spiritual rum element in it. So I think, I think the powerlessness of indentureship led to an escape, which was the, which was the rum. And of course the British did not, did not allow it to be um, uh, uh, um, by accident, you know, they planned rum shops next to our villages, you know, uh, because they knew that, that, that Indian men wanted an escape to express power. So we escaped into rum. And then when the rum wasn't working, uh, we realized that in, at home, uh, we were powerless too, to some, to some extent, because we either too tired, we're uneducated, we're not organized as a people. Um, we don't take up social, political issues. So we're very weak even at home. So what do we do to get power? We beat the wife, we chop the wife, we, you know, punch the wife, you know, and, and the children too, of course, you know. So I think um, for me, uh, this movie, um, is, is, you know, can help to turn the tide on how we have been immortalizing rum in our music and in our life, you know, I mean, Guyanese, when uh, when we got to watch cricket, we don't we don't consider the sport, the sport of it. We consider the rum of it, you know. When when we we do anything, is it's all about the rum, and, and that causes a whole lot of other issues. And I think and I think pers I, I think sociologically, right now in Guyana, especially um, where um, to a large extent there's some powerlessness in Indians. Um, due to, to crime and due to the political instability, you know, um, um, you can see, a, a, you, you're probably going to see a, a, a resurgence of, of this kind of behavior in Indians to kind of, you know, go even deeper into the bottle and, and, and finding ways to escape because it's not nice what's happening on the ground in Guyana. And, and much of what we do must be grounded in our reality or else, you know, arts is irrelevant if it doesn't reflect um, um, who we are and what we aspire to be. You know? yeah. So um, okay. that, that, that's, that's my contribution. And I'm, and, and I'm hoping that, okay. that um, huh? we don't continue to escape uh, into the bottle, but we can see that the bottle did not allow us to, uh, to, 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 to generate any kind of leadership in community and in family. But but even but but actually uh, weakened us and 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 I think and I think there needs to be a reversal of this uh, glorification of of, uh, of the spirits in the bottle. Thank you so Thank much, you. Salim. Um, uh, Carla, do you want to comment on that, please? Could, please? could I, I could I just go back to um, Mr. Williams's um, contribution about if we can use this? Yes, please, Trevon. Please do. Um, this, what you just saw there was the beginning of the film. That was about the first four minutes of the film. It gets 
very dark. The language is so potent that I chose not to use a lot of added camera work. You could say flashbacks, you could call it all, all different things, CGI. I chose for the actors to tell the story as the characters and the dialogue gets very, very dark. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> the only way I, you know, this might be a bad joke, but see the only way I could describe it is take your worst relationship and amp it up by about 10. And that is the dialogue that is exchanged between this man and woman. So I don't know if schools would actually want to, to show, you would have to be at least 16 years, 17, 18 years and older to, to um, for a teacher to approve. So maybe like a university could use this, but as far as like a secondary school maybe concerned, maybe upper six and stuff, maybe. Um, and also, what was the other thought I had? Oh, and let me, let me just get this and I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna call any names and I'm gonna ill speak anybody. But when I was looking for funding, I went around other um, institutions that would, if they could help, whether it was domestic, an institute for domestic or, or, or East Indian, you know, and I try to shop it around. And one of the, the institutions, when I spoke with them, they loved it. They loved it from everything I was seeing. And then I sent them the script. And then I got back an email, which was very scathing that said, uh, we want nothing to do with this. So I, um, like I said, I'm not gonna call any names. Uh, but it is, it was very difficult for them to read that script and to understand what it would translate to in film. And I'm hoping that they, the, the representatives and whoever, when it was on the Trinidad Film Festival, that they might have taken a look at it. If not, it wouldn't be the last time. This will make you wrong. But what you see on the script and what the actors, the director, and all the other tech technicals bring to life on the screen, whether it be on your handheld device or on the silver screen, is two separate things. Tony Hall once said to us, a script is not a play, and by extension, a movie. A script is a script. And this is why there are so many bodies of literature that so many people could interpret in so many different ways. But when you put it in film form, when you stage it as a play, it narrows down the amount of critique that you can give on the content and the context of the work. So I just wanted to add that to, um, to Mr. Um, Williams's contribution. William, thank you so much, Trivan, for giving up. Yeah, you just spoke it out. Um, our next um let's see who's going to comment next is um he was there already Ravi Dev he wanted to comment so please do comment and can you please hold it up to about two minutes because um the time is running out yes uh thank you for giving me this opportunity to make a comment first of all I must compliment these yes. very young people for dealing with a very, very, very complex situation uh, so artfully, and I use the word artfully in a positive sense, meaning to look at levels beneath what might be apparent to the surface, to force us to think about this problem, which is uh, common throughout the diaspora. And when you have a situation that, we, that is prevalent in each one of the 13 or so countries into what we are, we've been shipped, it means that there's a systemic uh, problem rather than an individual one. And very quickly, what I want to say is that it comes back to what Salim said earlier. It was a question of powerlessness, that we were thrown into a situation where you were completely powerless in terms of uh, your, the choices you were forced to make. And therefore, you had a role to play that we come from a culture 
where the male is supposed to be the provider and the protector of his family. And we see what is what happened in the plantation context mm -hmm. as we were passed through what was called a total institution where you were, uh, every aspect of your life was controlled. There wasn't very much control of your own life. So coming back to the notion of protection, we saw in the fields that our men could not protect their women uh, in the fields from the depredations of whether the overseers or so on and so forth. Uh, very early on, uh, many of the strikes in Guyana was due to uh, us fighting off these white overseers. You had the early cutlass murders where the jealousy of between of the men towards uh, their women being enticed because there was a shortage of women. So there was great competition uh, for those women and women exercise more of a free choice. So the point I wanna conclude by this that it's a very complex situation and I'm so happy that you young people are using this form through film. Film is a very powerful medium so that it will force us to think and all of us have a duty to expose this film uh, to various audiences. And um, I want to assure you that in Guyana, where I live, um, it's on the agenda. Alcoholism is a serious problem and the domestic violence that emanates out of that and all the other dysfunctional behavior. And as um, Professor Williams talked about suicide, there's a whole syndrome of, of problems that we talk about in Guyana where the Indian family is involved, which is alcoholism, uh, domestic violence and suicide. They go together as a kind of a syndrome. So again, young, 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 men, young men and young women, thank you very much for showing us what is possible uh, to, this, to, uh, to this generation. And thank you again. Thank well, you, Ravidev. Can I please ask Carla to comment, if you have any comments now? Of all the contributions, I think you, uh, there is something you want to say. I'm not sure if it was telling on my face or not. <laughs> um, OK. Well, I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat. and. Starting with what Mr. Ram Jagatso said, that, uh, I mean, every, everybody seems to be um, interested in the issue of alcoholism and what could be done, because it seems to be a long-standing epidemic, especially in the, well, ac according to what people say in the Indian culture. Um, alcohol is a problem, yes, but because rum is real and people's reactions when they drink are really real. But anything in moderation is fine. What leads you to overindulge something? That is the real issue. You know, the, so, so essentially, I think what I'm saying is that the alcohol is not the problem. The individual and the, the lack of, of co coping mechanisms or ill coping mechanisms, or maybe just the lack of resources to, to deal with, with their lives might be the problem. But, um, and I understand what Mr. Jagaso is saying that basically when somebody is drunk and you nag them and you, you attack, them or you're aggressive with them, that is perpetuating this, the problem. But I, I, to be honest, I just think it's heating up that particular situation, but I don't think it's perpetuating the problem. I think the problem is the individual, not the, the reactions around it might exacerbate it, but that's not the actual problem. Um, we live in the internet age where if anybody wants to find out any information on anything, if anybody wants to access any resources, it is a click away. Um, to say that alcoholics cannot help themselves and they don't know what they're doing, I think is incorrect. Because you manage to function enough to buy the rum. You know? You can't. Yes, but sometimes it's an addiction. Absolutely. I understand that. But. Yes. 
I'm just saying, I, I feel like I feel like we are circling the problem instead of addressing the what is at the heart of it. So thank you, Carla. Let me ask Mrs. Sylvia Perez as a woman, uh, what's her contribution on this? I think uh, maybe she has another comment. Mrs. Sylvia Perez? Then she has to unmute. Can you please unmute? Yes, yes, hello. Thank you. Yeah, um, I enjoy the little pieces of the film and it has brought many sad incidents to my mind and I am happy that this form of presenting our situation among the Indians um, is being brought by young people who probably have experienced it in their neighborhood. And I always recall um, once while visiting with Dr. Mahabir, we were discussing the same problem. And he said, he doesn't know why the Indians drink so much and cause so much problem. And we were driving around in his neighborhood and he said, look there, see that one, what he's doing. And as we turned the other, look there. And it, they were all Indians. So um, I also liked what um, the person from Guyana said, you know, it's a, a kind of, powerlessness that is happening and we have inherited or that's a kind of in quote legacy we have reaped from the conditions we were brought under and um, the men um, feel that is their way of taking power and of overcoming their weaknesses but it's the wrong way and um, yeah. nowadays, I feel like the women have come to light. And like the film, the, the girl, the, the actress, you know, at the beginning, she was kind of quiet. But at the end, I like that she began, you know, speaking up. Yeah. As like women, like my parents in the days gone by, my mommy couldn't talk back to my daddy because he would box her down and once, once he even broke her jawbone because, you know, he came in that kind of way and um, that's how he shut her up. You can't tell me anything, I am the boss. But the women nowadays, I feel because of education and being exposed, you know, they, they can handle themselves. We can handle ourselves that we don't have to really depend financially on the breadwinner. We ourselves can also do that. And um, the tables are slowly turning. Exposure, education, and like this um, movie, I would like to see the complete um, movie. The complete very soon so you know I would like to share it with my people around here too in Belize. Thank you so much Mrs. Sylvia. Due to time we are going to ask um, Chairman Andrews to comment on this please and uh, yes Chairman Andrew. Chairman Andrews. Is he there? Yeah I'm here I'm here. Thanks for inviting. Yes. Um, as I said before, domestic violence is not the preserve of the Indian com community. Um, in the African community too, I mean, the Africans are victims of slavery, but even among the privileged classes, domestic violence is quite widespread. I know it's particularly widespread among the Syrian community, which is an Eastern, um, an Eastern civilization like the African and the Indian civilization. But I mean, Violence, gender-based violence against women is an international um, concern. And um, blaming the victim really is not the way to go and making excuses for the males who came from 
um, a history of powerlessness, really, is not the way to go. I mean, it's time for us to, to move past this, the victimhood, and really look at ourselves. I'm glad to hear Sylvia say that um, women are no longer dependent on, on men because, you know, we are better educated, we are more self-sufficient economically, and um, so a lot of the um, a lot of the conflicts that might arise in a home in a relationship because of money and so no longer exist because women don't have to ask men for, for money. Traditionally, when women ask men for money, they don't get it. I mean, wives. I mean, I'm not talking about outside men. I mean, wives. You know, but I'm glad that you know this movie is highlighting the issue because in our society in Trinidad violence has always been a very serious one. I went to a Guardian newspaper exhibition which showed, you know, there were examples of music reports going back to the early part of the 20th century and there were quite a few reports of men who had killed their wives and who had gotten very short prisons, um, prison terms and there was one story that stood out to me. It was of an indentured laborer who saw his wife speaking to an African one day, maybe on her way back from the field. And when she came home, he beheaded her. And um, he accused her of friending with, with the African man. And when he was brought before the magistrate, the magistrate said he quite understood why the indentured laborer should take that course of action because you know, he was quite right to correct his wife in that way if he thought she was stepping out of, of line. And there have been other reports in the 80s and so men, where men have killed their, their wives on suspicion of infidelity. And the magistrate has been in agreement by giving them seven years, five years, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that the, the movie is a really timely one indeed. And thanks for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we are going to close, so I want to ask Dr. Betaram to um, comment, please. Is he there? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> good evening. You know, I, I know we're talking about this, and by the way, uh, congratulations to um, Arnold, uh, Trevon, and, and Carla. Um, uh, it, it's a movie, but for me, you know, this is real life. Um, my older brother, um, you know, fell victim to alcoholism. And I, and I know it is it is a major issue. And, and I know talking about it brings some kind of, no pun intended, soberness to this discussion. Um, but I can tell you, um, you know, we've talked about the, the historical origin. When we look at the, the vices that are the plagues Indian, especially in Guyana, there are three things that really uh, come together. There's alcoholism, right? Um, you know, there, there's abuse, and I, I know we didn't see much of the physical abuse here, but there's also mental abuse, uh, which is involved, and of course, suicide. Uh, in fact, Guyana has uh, the highest uh, suicide rate in the world per capita, uh, and that's a sobering fact. Um, so I think, you know, having this discussion and talking about this, and, and kudos to the young people who are putting this together, it does bring a level of social consciousness, right, to people. And I think um, the question is, where do we go from here? Um, well, uh, if you have a level of consciousness that's out there, hopefully this can trigger uh, into some kind of um, discussion about organizations, uh, how we can secure funding and how we can address these issues. But I think one of the things we also see, and I'm going to kind of keep this short, is when, yes. when we talk about these issues, you know, we also have to consider, we're seeing what is happening, um, you know, to the woman, right, in that, in that clip we saw. But there's also a dynamic that I don't think we actually talked about here, that, and that dynamic has to do what is going through the mind of that individual who's drinking. So we have to look at that also as a bigger picture and as a bigger problem in society. And one of the things um, I've noticed in Guyana, and again, I'm not a psychologist, um, I'm basing this on anecdotal evidence, is that we're seeing combination of situations where uh, these issues come about and we're seeing let's take suicide for instance we see people who are committing suicide but we also have events where people who commit suicide also take the lives of their their spouse and uh, 
their siblings. So it's an extension of that level of suicide that we see. And I think alcoholism does play a major role. Um, and, and I think it's something, uh, the fact that we're discussing it here in this, um, it, it, I mean, it's sad to hear that uh, funding was slow in coming, uh, but I think these are issues we need to, to you know, to discuss. I mean, the last movie that I saw coming out from the Caribbean was uh, was the movie uh, where Basde Pandir uh, was an actor. But I think we've come, from, uh, you know, a long way from that. And I think uh, this is a broader social conscious movement. I think if we can continue with this kind of um, discussion and having these kinds of, um, you know, real life, real life um, issues addressed. Uh, you know, in these um, docudramas, if you want to call it that, I think it will be helpful to educating all of us. Uh, and of course, the next step would be, what do we do about it? How do we address these issues? Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, you're going to close. So I want to thank again, Arnold, Trevin and Carla for your participation. And of course, for the movie. And um, Trevon, I would like to ask you to uh, say a final word, please. I was hoping you would say that. Um, <laughs> thank you again for having us uh, on behalf yes. of the company. Um, but one thing, well, two things. One, anybody who wants to reach out to me is the exact same name, Trevon Jogmohan. It's just... You can find me on Facebook. Uh, I would love to, you know, continue the dialogue. Any, and we need dialogue to continue to progress with actually doing something with issues, whether we, we, whether whatever the issue is, you know, we need to continue the dialogue. And the other, the final thing is, um, we we spoke about several issues here. What the film goes into, but the main issue. And this, this is the bread and butter issue of myself, Pini, and a lot, and Carla, yes. But to the actor, the artist is struggling to make way in the Caribbean. And I, um, of all the things I want to, to leave with everyone here tonight is that policy change needs to happen and I'm speaking as a Trinidadian and Tobagonian, that we policy change so that we can continue to do the work that, um, that we've started. Whether it's the, the work that I learned from Raymond Chukong in theater or my arrogance that I could pick up myself and decide I want to do a film with no formal training. It is the artist has a has a big um, burden to carry that we don't have insurance, we don't have um, we we don't have standard incomes, we don't have so many things, and people see a lot of us putting out work on a continuous That's basis, time. and no one ever really turns around and asks you, did you have lunch today? Because the lunch money that you had, you had to spend it. To travel to rehearsal, you know. So, as as much as uh, everyone um, contributed on the issues of the film, but the big picture that if we want to continue creating works that can spark conversation on topics like the alcoholism, like domestic abuse, like mental illness, the artist needs help, and going forward policy change is is that laws need to be changed and, and we corporate trinidad and tobago needs to to do a bigger play a bigger part in getting work the artists um sponsored and patronized so thank you again i know that was very long with it at the end here but thank you very much for having us Thank you very much, Trevon. Also for the last point, I think all artists know what, what is lacking and what we are missing in every way out. As an artist, I can truly understand you. So once again, Trevon, Kala, and Arnold, thank you very much. Thank you. And this brings us to an end of this public meeting. I want to thank all participants 
for tonight. So over to you, Dr. Kumar Mahabir. And from me, again, namaste. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you, Thank you very much, um, Sadhana, who has been a first-time <laughs> moderator. And I'm sure all of you would agree with me that she has done an excellent job. We would certainly like to have you as often as possible once your time is available, because you two are a full-time artist, being a yoga teacher and a dance tutor, and so many other skills that you have. Thanks again to Trevor and Carla and all. I know at least uh, two, Trevor and Arnold, I'm not sure about Carla, but they do this full-time. They're full-time artists. Uh, they don't work anywhere. They, they live, breathe, sleep, and dream <laughs> about art, acting, and, and theater, and film. So we have to give them our support in whatever way we can. Sylvia from Belize has extended an invitation for you to screen the film there after COVID, you know, we can make some arrangement and Ravi Dave in Guyana, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, in this chat here would like to have you. Um, this is not the end. I, am I hope and I'm sure that you're going to read a lot, of, a, a lot of rewards from this forum because I'm going to share this video and make it viral. We are going to pay to have it boosted on Facebook. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of support, especially financial support, which you need, because I know you have really made a lot of sacrifice and um, to put this uh, all together. I mean, sacrifice in every single way, because you do this full time. You don't work otherwise. So thank you all. Um, and I'm going at the end of the video, I'm going to put your contacts and so on. And so uh, uh, those who want to help can reach out to you. So thank you all for taking the time to participate. We have had a small number of participants tonight, smaller than usual. People like politics, it seems. And when we talk about politics and so on, we, we number about 90. But these are serious people here. And I'm sure everybody wants to help. And most people talk about the issues that were raised in the film, but not about the film itself, which is another discussion about the how long it took to film and the setting and the lighting and, and all of that, rehearsals and what that camera work and all of that. So thank you all again, especially the presenters. Thank you, Trevor and Carla and all. And thanks to the planning and advisory team behind me. I'm just the face of this program. This is a team effort directed by people in the Indian diaspora, Dr. Beturam Ramharak, who spoke, uh, Dr. Vishnu Bisram from New York, who was not with us tonight, um, Brian Rampal, who I'm sure is going to help you financially. He's a very charitable guy and, and wealthy too, from California. <laughs> and Salim, um, who spoke, Nasruddin, he's one of my advisors, our advisors, Clim Cliff Rashkumar from Canada. I'm going to ask him on your behalf to help you with funding. He too is a charitable, wealthy guy from Canada. And Ravi Dave has already um, uh, committed to help you screen the film in Guyana. Sat Sukde, who was on today, um, Naipaul, that chain of supermarkets, Naipaul supermarket, very charitable guy, very wealthy too. And um, so many other people um, from Suriname um, and from Trinidad and every part of the world. As I've said before, this uh, meeting is hosted by the Indo-Caribbean Cultural Center. So if you want to publish your book, your magazine, your report, feel free to contact us. We have a meeting like this every Sunday night, Trevor and Carla and Arnold, please feel free to join us um, on a variety of topics. You too can suggest topics. You can be a presenter, you can be a discussant, you can organize a panel um, on this platform. Our tentative topic, for next Sunday is the 2021 national budget um, in Trinidad, Guyana, and Suriname. These budgets in uh, Guyana and Suriname have been read already and presented. So we're going to have a post a budget review tomorrow. We are going to feel the earthquake, as some people say, because the budget is going to be presented in Parliament. So we are going to have a post budget discussion next Sunday. And um, this show is ours as well as yours, feel free to participate in any way. 
If you don't hear from us, then just go to the Facebook page of Indo-Caribbean Cultural Center Company Limited. You don't need a Zoom password or a link or anything. And join us every Sunday at this time. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for uh, taking the time and effort to be with us. Be safe, enjoy the rest of the day or night, depending on your time zone, and may God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.